Okay. Also, Vlad and I totally loved Venom. Oh, I don't know what. Like oh that? my god, it was so, much so bad. Oh, oh, we were laughing. I, I, we were having so much fun. If you guys want to do five minutes on Venom right now and like do it as like a special, just Venom okay. app. Here we are, and as our we've promised people, we're doing a little bit of breaking of the format in Friday Night Movie this year. We're going to do a special lightning round just on the movie Venom, which some of us liked and some of us have a lot of questions for. Just so to catch people up, Venom is a movie about an alien symbiote that takes over Tom Hardy's er, Eddie Brock, and <laughs> they fight bad guys. I feel like that's you don't need to know do much they, more. Though? <laughs> okay, but no. here's the whole thing. It's an alien symbiote g- bonding with a human body. You guys body, say that like you know yet, what symbiote means. Uh, I've seen the alien movies. I'm sure it's a thing. Um, <laughs> but the most unrealistic part of that entire movie is the part where people in San Francisco like are friendly and talk to each other. Like he's friends with the woman who runs his bodega and the homeless woman on the street. That, Vlad and I are watching. We're like, well, that's absurd. The rest <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> You, you, have have told me constantly, you go absurd. to your neighborhood coffee place and you're like, hey, so I'll have, you know, the usual. And they're like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> and you go in there every day. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Literally, literally so, happened to Vlad like to yesterday. He went for a walk to the other neighborhood place. And uh, yeah. So no. Yeah. That was absurd. As a child of the 90s, which is I, I believe Venom premiered in Spider-Man comics number. I think I want to say it's 298. Uh, or, or or 300 one of the no I think it's 298 is the first real epi- issue of Venom but as a child of the 90s where Venom really rose to prominence to me they somehow managed to without Spider-Man in the comic make a really fun and hilarious interpretation of this movie of this character sure. and I loved it now Lily you have yes. a lot of questions about this movie. I think maybe that'll help the okay. listeners understand. Okay. So you fire away some questions, and then, Becky, try to answer them with me, because I know you like the movie, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, one big one is, what is happening with Michelle Williams' clothes in this movie? I don't understand her outfits, nor what they dressed her in. And if you watch this movie, that was one of the things that really bugged me. But that's not going to be her wig. So, so, wig her wig, so far, the her wig, her whole, her, her whole character and her whole thing, I don't understand. And I feel like it would, she, the movie would have been better if she wasn't in it. And I love her. So that's saying, oh, I, like, I, I don't get the guy Dan from here's, he should have here, just been Lily, in it. Here's why I think Michelle Williams was in the movie. This is what I theorize. I think, you know, they offered her the part. She says, "I'm not interested. This isn't for me. It's not my type of movie." And they said, "But you're gonna get to make out with Tom Hardy." And then she said, "Okay, that sounds like a fair deal." I mean, that's why I'm pretty I sure guess. she's in it. I don't she, buy it. Why does I she think, only make I out with she... guys who are in Batman movies? No, I don't know, man. Oh, oh shine. Too soon. Oh, that's too not soon. nice. No, no. No, Anyways, we're, like... we're getting off track. The point is that I think it seemed as if she maybe had more of a role, and they just cut it. And then oh, that's a movie that was Venom definitely edited like, in all yeah, sorts of this, this movie seems like it was edited by multiple drunk people. Like, I don't <laughs> understand that, her whole thing in it. Okay, also... You want to compare this to Deadpool, but only halfway through the movie does it get all funny and like weird, like narration stuff. There's when a whole entire Eddie, first part of the movie Eddie that's Brock, not funny at all. When Eddie, well, because until he bonds but, with the symbiote and but, he and Venom can okay. speak to each other, how could but it I be feel funny? Like it should have been from the beginning because the narration, Venom's narration, I just think it's extremely uneven. I have Venom's a narration I at have the beginning, real... hold on, Venom narration at the beginning is like scary and mean. And then all of a sudden he's like, he's a loser on this planet, on his planet. So that's why he yeah, wants to so... be cool on this planet. So my question to you is what's Venom's motivation? Just not being a loser? That's also, not a plot for a movie. Does, why does Riot have more of an arsenal than Venom? Like, why leader. does he have more? That is actually like, explained in the movie, like, and it's the leader of the group. But how does he get more tools Because he's weapon. the leader. He's the leader of why their, like, space troop. When they so go like, and they why? find the five canisters, is the five different 
aliens out there. They're like a little posse, and he's the – why am I answering these questions? <laughs> he's, he's the leader of their little group as if they're an army troop in the military, but for can example. Venom, but can Venom get no. more No, more he's weapon? not the leader. No. Like how is Riot so he, born with more, more weapon he's capabilities? He's not born. He just has more powers. And the, the depth of which you're asking these questions, I how admire. Could, how but... do you gain more powers to get better weapons? So I, I admit You're just the leader. I admit this is not a thing, so I don't read, ask these questions. I read the Venom comics up until Riot and the other, like when they started making multiple different kinds of symbiotes, I, I really stopped paying attention. And so I don't Good really dumb. know about the rules between the symbiotes. Okay. But the I, other rule is I don't understand the food. At the beginning, <laughs> he only wants to eat live eels or humans that have to be alive. And then he's asking him by the end to make him a bunch of French fries. Well, he hadn't tried tater tots yet. One, two. Yeah, have you had when, tater tots? When... Oh, they're so good. <laughs> I'm not a top person, but listen, when when Venom is inside Annie and then Venom kisses Eddie. He's like, ooh, I wasn't French fries. No, isn't that weird, weird that like Venom kisses Eddie? Well, yes. it's, a, it's a bromance. Bromances can kiss. They can, but it's it's like, but he's dressed as a woman. Venom like has boobs in that scene. And then there was some mix so again. Venom I feel like this is a situation Eddie? where people were in a writers' room just drawing a bunch of stuff and being like, "Let's do this." And <laughs> I do was like how do they're it. bending the you know gender norms there and the I think hetero it's norms. To be her, wait. I don't know. Oh, okay, does wait. Venom take a female voice and shape when he's inside Not- of her? Voice you know, and shape, Venom, yes. Yeah, Venom yes. doesn't have to be gendered, right? It could just be depending who it's in. But that's what it, it is because he has Venom boobies. All right, All right. He's so let, let me give the defense okay, of Venom. Another, oh, sorry, another question. On, another question. Why does Tom Hardy want to keep him? Because of the, the power. All good. he has to do is just turn on the radio and get that little sucker to like, pop out of him, and then he's going to his normal life. No, but he Still a died. he likes the power. B he started to get attached to him. And yeah, he liked the idea of being a superhero and being able, right? Because Tom Hardy, so follow me here. Tom Hardy's character, Eddie Brock, is this do gooder journalist in this story. And he would, he very much wants to do good in the world. And when he's able to control Venom and build that relationship with him, he realizes he can use Venom to do good things. And that's ultimate, and Venom saved his life. So he wants to keep him. Now, at this point, I'm pretty sure we are way off from whatever existed in the comics. I mean, clearly. The actual comic story is that Spider Man brings back the Venom symbiote, before it's called Venom, from a trip to space. And he starts using the costume, and then he realizes. Somehow this makes me more sense to me. So then he starts using the costume, but then he realizes that the costume is evil, and so he goes up to some bell tower and uh, uses sound, which has always been part of the Venom character, and uses sound to get the symbiote off of him. Then later, there's this journalist named Eddie Brock who is trying to break some story, and Spider-Man, uh, or Peter Parker, one or the other, proves that there's something falsified in the story or there's something wrong in the story and Eddie Brock's career gets ruined. So he's down and out, but he's down and out and vengeful. And then he links up with the symbiote who wants revenge on Spider-Man and they become Venom and they become this awful villain for Spider-Man. But then over time what happens, and I think part of this is very much part of the 90s era of comics, is that everybody loved Venom so much. It was like an event every year or two when Venom would appear in the comics. And they started to make him more of an anti-hero and part of the way they made him more of an anti-hero was that over time the way I recall them explaining it was that the symbiote as it spent more time with Eddie Brock because Eddie Brock is not a fundamentally bad person is the symbiote and Eddie Brock started to need each other and the symbiote was no longer able to leave Eddie Brock by the end and so they kind of become this like I said this like you know black hat uh, anti-hero type character, but the other thing mm. that happened in the comics that the movie allu- the movie plays out and the movie alludes to it's in a different order in the comics is they have some other symbiotes appear that are far more evil and far more far more terrible, and Venom at times has to team up with Spider-Man, and so. In in the order in the movie, you have Riot first, but I I believe the the actual second symbiote to appear is referenced in the credit scene. Did you guys see the credit scene? Yes, I Woody, forgot. Woody, Woody Harrelson with that amazingly hilarious red wig. The inner uh, so, yeah, who is he supposed so to be? He spoiler alert. He is supposed to be Cletus Cassidy. Oh. 
Oh, big spoiler. I give a shit. Go he ahead. Is, and Josh That's and I terrible. are sitting there watching this movie, like cheering every time we saw a cool reference to the comics. Cletus mm. Cassidy is a serial killer who Venom eventually multiplies in the comics and uh, oh, and leaves like a drop of himself in this cell. And Cletus Cassidy, who is a bona fide evil person, not like Eddie Brock, not a complex person. He's just a psychopathic killer and becomes carnage. So that's why when Woody Harrelson says, I'm going to get out and I'm going to cause carnage, that is the foreshadowing that the symbiote will get together with why him. Did, why does Venom leave drops of himself? Well, in the comics, they essentially make it that Venom eventually reproduces. And, like, within what? itself. And so, again, they're just going to take, like, one thing from the comic and then blow it out and make so it no allow, sense. Allow, me, sense to de- allow me to defend Venom. Number one, I love Tom Hardy. I love Tom Hardy in these comic book action movies, the, like Mad Max. I have, a, and I have he, a question about Tom Hardy, though. Yeah. Um, can Tom Hardy only do an American accent if it's a Brooklyn accent? He has a yes. weird American accent, but I I, I, I love his American it's accent. Always, I love it. It always is. It. It's always from Brooklyn. Always like, no, it's, it's, very, Brooklyn it's, it's very effective. So he's a but also actor. his British accent also sounds like a Brooklyn accent. So it's confusing <laughs> to me. Wait, I, before I have just a quick before we defend him, I have just one more quick question. First of all, I'm really am interested now in like an aliens verse kind of movie about these guys, like having them battle it out on their planet. That I'm interested in. But also, um, why is there an Eminem song at the oh, end? Yeah. Like it's the '90s, well, like Will Smith doing Men in Black, where he names everything in the movie. Like I'm a parasite. Doo doo bee boo. Like I'm yeah, not, I'm I thought that was like 1990. That movie, that song has never been released on the radio because a, it's terrible. <laughs> B, it's not the 90s, so I don't understand that. So I am. How much money did they pay for? <laughs> I am not the song? first person to say this, but I read articles saying that this movie was essentially like made out of time. Like this movie is a 90s movie that they made with today's technology, and I couldn't agree more. I want to say I the read script it might be from the 90s. I mean, it that probably is. But to me, Venom is a quintessential 90s comic book character. It's it, it to me it's it totally connects with that era in the mid 90s I mean he was created beforehand but his rise to like crazy prominence was very much during that era I have the first issue where Carnage gets created for example and to me that was one of the great things about this movie it had that weird 90s dark sense of humor that you were way more allowed to have then like the way Seven Psychopaths kind of felt like it was a 90s movie even though it was made now that to me is the the same way so A. Tom Hardy aces as the main actor and the same way Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man and Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, he elevates what could have been just a cartoon character wrapped around a human but gives you someone that you really love to see on screen. So that's one. Number two, it had a great sense of humor and to me, whether it's Venom or Spider-Man, humor is really, really, really important because Spider-Man himself is hilarious and Venom also, there's a darkness sense of humor, there's a dark sense of humor about it and they delivered that, it was kind of absurd at times, and, but they delivered that really, really, really well and to me I also feel like they took a huge risk, this is Sony who have, who have screwed up Spider-Man in so many different ways over the years and they screwed up Venom in as you guys have never seen the Spider-Man no, 3, the Sam Raimi no, so Sony no. blew it it once before with Venom. And this time they managed to make Venom work. Right, and that one Venom comes back. And he does appears like, at the end. And he does like a dance. Right? Yeah. And he does like a dance. Yeah, yeah I remember that. So yeah. in, in this one, I think they took more the Deadpool formula. And I think that that worked really well. And I'm hoping, because the end of the movie talks about how there's different Spider-Man universes. It connects to the Spider-Verse. I'm hoping that we see Venom reappear in the Spider-Verse, and we see him reappear in the Marvel Universe, I want to see a Tom Hardy, Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool team up like there's nobody's business. To me, Is that, that possible? Can those two worlds cross over? Not financially as of now, but but now the... Fo- so Deadpool's But it's just a matter of time until Disney owns everything, so, so it doesn't matter? De- it could happen. Disney's owned by Fox. Fox is about to be no, folded under no, no, Disney. No, no. Oh, sorry. Fox is owned by Disney. Fox now owns. Fox, so, no, Fox is now owned by Disney. So all of the X Men type characters are going to be folded into the Marvel universe in one way or another. I think a lot of them are going to be recast. But 
Deadpool is going to be one that they keep, obviously. That's uh, that's why I think they released that PG version of the Deadpool movie over the winter uh-huh. holidays, so that they could get Ryan Reynolds into the regular Marvel universe. And Sony and Sony and Disney had to do a deal in order to make the most recent Spider-Man movie. So it's possible on the success of Venom, we could get him into a Deadpool team-up movie. It's in everybody's interest, people. And with that, thank you for joining us for this lightning round episode of Friday Night Movie. Does anyone want to do any shout-outs or recommendations before we leave? I do. I do. I want to do a shout-out to Cousin Vanessa, not just for the usual Cousin Vanessa shout-out, but because um, she uh, is has been helping me out with my wellness and my winter wellness during these darker, colder days by getting me into using essential oils, and uh, I wanted to say thank you for that, and if anyone is interested in using or buying essential oils, you you should hit up Cousin Vanessa on Twitter at Cousin Vanny is right. her is her handle. Yeah. Really? Any shout outs? Uh, I think maybe her phone died. Okay. And I'll just say that without <laughs> doing... Skipping that? Without... Oh, do you have any shout outs? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was on mute. I was on mute. I want to <laughs> shout out to Ash um, because I feel like Shy and Ash are like becoming the... Like, the um, Charlie's Angels of Nerds, that, like, whenever somebody needs, like, a quick issue fix for TV show or computer, it's, like, you put up the bat signal and she responds, too, um, which is awesome. So I'm very grateful for that. And uh, recently, she helped Shy, right, put a fringe on Plex with Spanish subtitles. <laughs> Wasn't she involved in that, like, crazy shenanigan? It, which it was actually us Ash and her, and her husband, Paul. Paul Tynan is a okay. wonderful man. He so, is my computer guru. So shout out to you. I, you guys need, like, a cool name. I don't know. Something, <laughs> the nerdy Charlie's Angels. I don't know, whatever it is. But I appreciate that. And um, shout out to you, Pancake, for helping me get fringe on Plex with Spanish subtitles, which is impossible. So thank you. And I will give a shout out to Matt Bergman, who is a friend of ours who loved Dad's character actor episode. And my big recommendation is a show I just happened to start today before I I took a nap. But okay, I'm going to give you the cast and the premise, okay? Just in the first episode, Ron Funches, the dude who played PETA from Hunger Games, Eliza Coop, Paul Shear, Ed Bagley, Haley Joel Osmith, and Keith David. What? And it is a show that is a mix between, follow me here, at least based on what I saw at the beginning, but it's R-rated, Ready Player One, High Fidelity, The Last Starfighter, and Back to the Future. What What? is this show? It's called Future Man. It's on Hulu. It got, like, recommended to me by one of those algorithms. (laughs) And it was right? And it was right. It is It is definitely R-rated. Like, don't watch it with your parents. It's hilarious. I got in the first episode. It's hilarious, but also has some great action, great meta humor. And uh, I just, I'd never, uh, PETA Hutchinson, whatever his name is, who I hated Mm -hmm. in the Hunger Games movies, is clearly a really talented, charming actor. Because he is great great in this. And the Hunger Games character is clearly a dud. So I'm going to end on that. And with that, the music will kick in from What Does It Eat? And we dance. I love you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for doing this. Talk soon. Bye. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.